Okay, I'm going to start with uh, this image. Um, I think the first thing to try to figure out when trying to edit this is um, is what is it that you're trying to to really capture in this photo? And uh, I, since that's something that you had in, in mind when you took the picture, um, but uh, I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to go by the picture itself. So the first thing I notice about this uh, particular uh, picture is that it, um, I think it's because of the very stark overhead lighting, uh, and also I think it looks like there's probably a white wall behind you, which is sort of acting like a light source as well, is that the whole image looks very, kind of flat to me. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, try to play with, uh, with kind of the, the tones a little bit. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is a play with the contrast and I'm going to make it a little more high contrast, but that's not really doing what I want it to. Um, so you can see on the histogram it's stretching it out so the whites are whiter and the, and the darks are darker. Uh, but that's not really what I want to be doing because I think the whites already are sufficiently white. Uh, so what I'll do instead is I'll use these highlight, shadow, whites, and blacks buttons um, to, uh, to change the darks without changing the lights. Uh, so I'm going to try turning the shadows a little bit deeper using the shadow button um, and so that's just going to add a little bit of contrast you can see in the histogram it moves the the darks the dark darker but without touching the light uh, if I wanted to move the white I could play with that too uh, but like I said I think that's sufficiently um, although maybe I'll brighten it up a little bit like that um, let's see whoops blacks don't do it I don't think uh, looks like I have a setting on here where if I um, if I go too far to black and set it to a uh, uh, hard zero, it looks like it's turning it blue to show me that. I have no idea how I managed to do that. Um, so I think I'll start with that. Uh, the clarity is something I've mentioned that I, I do like. It helps bring out texture. Uh, although you might have to, if you do apply clarity, you might have to uh, sort of dial back some of the, the turning down of the shadows because now you're sort of darkening it twice. So that's those are my first things that I would try. Um, the I wonder if sharpening will do anything. So that sharpening is also interesting because you see you don't have a lot of you have no noise, essentially. Uh, you can see up here this is ISO uh, ISO 100. So because the the light was so bright, there's there's no noise in the picture, which means that I can play a lot with the sharpening, and you can see the effect it has on the stucco wall. Um, and without and the reason I was saying that you know, and then you can see in this little zoom window right here. Uh, which happens to be where is that? Oh, that was on the flower pot. Um, you can also see the effects that it's having on the texture of the flower pot. So I think that trying to bring out the texture in this picture, I think, would be beneficial. So I'm going to do a lot of sharpening. Uh, I can play. I haven't. You can see the effect of, in the little zoom window here of playing with the radius setting in the sharpening. Uh, so I think something in the middle. If I double click, it returns to uh, double click on any of the names, it returns to the default for those names. Uh, so the next thing is uh, because of the harshness of this light, um, and as I said, there's also it seems to be that cut that that white wall behind you, which is also acting as a light source. Um, I if I feel like the colors are also slightly washed out. So there's two different things I could do with that. First of all, I'm going to go over here on the left and do a snapshot, and I'm going to uh, Oh, it's over on my other screen. I'm going to save a snapshot, and this is uh, this is a way of saving the settings so that I can jump back to that position if I want to. So now that I've played with sort of the the lightness, darkness, brightness, contrast, all that stuff, I'm going to save it. Um, so as I was just saying, the I think that the colors are a little. There's a lack of saturation here that I think is due to the, that bright, bright, harsh lighting. So there's two things that, that make me think of that. One is, can I take advantage of that and see what it looks like in black and white? If there's not a lot of contrast there in the first place, then maybe, I mean color contrast, maybe black and white would be of interest. Um, i got to figure out how to turn off that blue thing. Uh, anyway, the uh, show shadow clipping, hide shadow clipping. Okay, so that's what's going on is uh, I can click up here on the high and low ends of the histogram and it's telling me whether to show or uh, or not where I'm clipping it. So um, 
what I was doing just now is I switched over to black and white here. Let me double click on that to return everything to normal. So this is an even weighting on all the con the color contributions to black and white. So what I, I can do is I can click on this little uh, guy right here and that will allow me to, whoops, I turned it off. Um, you see now my icon when I'm over the picture turns into that little circle with the arrow, up and down arrows. So if I click and drag up, that wall has a lot of yellow in it, and so actually right now I'm clicking and dragging down, so I'm decreasing the amount of yellow that goes into the, and green, that goes into the black and white. Alternatively, I can go, I can drag it up, and now I'm, I'm increasing the amount of, of uh, white and, uh, and yellow that goes in. So let me just go back to that, uh, to the, the default, the, what it was before. Now I noticed there was some uh, red, in fact, if I, let me see, I'm just going to do done so I can turn this on. Okay, so here I clicked on the side by side uh, so I can see what colors I have to play with. So, for example, if I wanted to turn the oranges down, I'm gonna, I'll make these these bricks darker. Um, so there's two ways to do it. One is I can click on the bricks and pull down, and you can see that's that's really darkening uh, that portion as well as anything else that has some orange in it, um, and. Uh, so I can do that, but I think I, I think I just made these bricks here way too black. So uh, maybe I could just do something like this. Uh, the other thing is that I do like the green being there. Um, so let me let me lighten up those leaves a little bit because I don't like how the light how the leaves look so green. <coughs> so that's one option was to do this in black and white and sort of adjust the uh, the contrast of the black and white that way. So I'll add I'll save another another snapshot. Let me go back to color um, and you can see that Oh, I turned on the saturation clipping on the white side. Uh, okay so now I'm back to color or HSL is actually probably where I want to be. So I can now look at this and say and say well um, maybe I want to as I was saying that I think that the colors looked a little bit flat to me uh, so maybe I want to accentuate the orange a little bit um, and maybe deaccentuate the red. Um, although now that doesn't look right. The deaccentuated red doesn't look right up here in the flowers. Uh, so I'll just go back. I'll go back to, to the basics here. One of the things that you can do also is I'm applying this to the entire image. Uh, one of the easy things to do is um, is this button right here is a if I mouse over it should tell me. It's a graduated filter so if I drag from the bottom up and then I click down here and say show selected mask so this is showing the graduated uh, filter and I can uh, take the middle line and tilt it and so if I were to drag this thing here you can see that it's applied completely down below the bottom line not applied at all above the bottom line and then there's a gradient uh, between the top line and the bottom line so if I want to make that a sharper gradient I bring them close together and it, it, it's a very sharp transition or if I a more gradual gradient like that so um, what I might want to do is say let me go into the bricks here actually let me go into like something like that uh, turn off this show selected mask so now I can see where I'm do what I'm doing and I can increase the saturation now I'm not this is not letting me increase the saturation uh, just of the orange uh, channel it's actually increasing everything and so you can see that this is pulling in some yellow that I don't really like, so that didn't work. Um, so those are the, the, some of the games you can play. Uh, I'll just click on that and delete it, because that didn't work. Um, okay, so let me scroll back down. So I think you can already see that the left and right, uh, that by pulling out some of the, doing the sharpening and the clarity and increasing the contrast, I've really um, uh, increased the, the uh, amount that you can see the texture. Uh, you can also see the effect of the sharpening that everything looks much much sharper that your the original image on the left looks quite a bit softer uh, so I think that's so why I, I like this um, one thing though is I feel like there's still I'm not sure that that my eye is being my eyes being drawn to several places my eyes being drawn to uh, this uh, all the colors of the laundry here but it's also being drawn to the open window the open door uh, so one of the things I can do, um, I, I don't like playing with vignetting much, uh, but sometimes I think it is effective, is, uh, I wonder what grain does. 
I'm not seeing much effect there. Um, hmm. Alright, anyway. Um, so if I were to turn this dark, I'm going to show you that's a, obviously extreme. So if I go to the negative side, it's a, it's a black vignette or a black border on the vignette. If I go to the positive side, it's a white border. Um, so I think that it works if you just subtly, very subtly do something like this where I've sort of, um, let me, so I can turn that off and on to see what it looks like with this little switch right here. Um, that, that applies all these effects, so if I had done dehazing or whatever, um, and I believe I can change the, what the vignetting, how the vignetting is applied, but I've never done that. I don't know what exactly what the difference is. But so you can see that, that even though this vignetting effect right here is very subtle, I think it, it does sort of help bring the eye into the middle of the picture. Uh, which I think is probably a little bit helpful. If I want to, um, let's see, this has, seems to have something to do with uh, with strength of the vignette as well. Um, if I go to uh, to feather, that's often a good way. It's set the feather down to zero, uh, so that's often a good way to see what is it doing. So this is like a a distance from the from the, the midpoint. Double click on that to get back to the default. Uh, this is obviously an intensity. I think I was at minus 17. <coughs> Roundness is uh, is how circular I am. Um, you can see I could I could it, it starts to clip uh, at the edges. Um, so I'll go back to default on that. Uh, I'm not sure what highlights is. Uh, and then I'll go back to the default on feather. So I think that 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 sort of um, I think I've, I've I've succeeded in overcoming some of the the why I. I first saw as flatness in the picture. Uh, so I don't know if this was kind of what you were trying to capture, but I think that it, it at least makes the picture pop or stand out a little bit more. Um, and in fact, I mentioned the greens earlier. Uh, if I wanted to to increase the luminance of the greens or something like that to make those leaves stand out a little bit more, I can do that. So you can see that happening here. Also, when you have the, the cursor crosshairs, if you, uh, whoops, no, not that one. Uh, anyway, I, I, if you have this crosshair, if you click once, it'll uh, it'll zoom into a certain amount and out to a certain amount, or a control plus. Is it control plus? Must not be. View. Or it is zoom out, zoom in. All right. I wonder why it seemed to be. Uh, it seemed to not let me in anymore. So it looks like actually I probably, if you look at the details up here, it looks like I definitely over sharpened it because it's. It's doing some really weird things uh, up there, so I'm going to go back and set that back to zero, and then maybe come down a little bit. Um, I'm not sure. All right, I'll just play with some stuff here. Um, okay, so that's a little, maybe a little bit better. I certainly overdid it before, um, so I'm trying to find a a happy medium really between. Um, making the stucco more interesting, and as you can see, I was sort of getting some artifacts on the edges of the of the plant here, um, and probably these settings, which I, I don't understand exactly what they do or how they should be set, have some effect. So this is something where I I think I over sharpened it, and you can see also in the pole here uh, that there's some strange striation effects. But I think so long as you don't zoom in too far, I think I do like this one a little bit better. Uh, so that's that one, um, and I will. Huh. I wonder if I can export it so that you can. I can probably save this so that you actually have uh, access to all the things that I played with, but I'll uh, I'll try that later.